Well, Broadway fans, she has stumbled along to a Tony win for The Drowsy Chaperone, and now she is back with her third nomination for The Prom. I'm Sam Ekman from Gold Derby, and with me is Tony winner Beth Level. It is such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here. Well, you know, you've been with the show uh, since the inception, basically. It's so seven, much fun. Seven years. Wow. Seven years. And, you know, it's a lot of people who you've worked with before, like Chad Beglin, Matt Sklar, Casey Nicola. What was your first introduction to the piece? What was your first interaction with it? Um, I was doing Elf at the time on Broadway, and I was having such a good time with Bob Martin and Matt Sklar and Chad Beglin and Casey Nicola. And I just off the cuff said, so what are we going to do next? I said, let's do something new, something to that effect, just blah, blah, blah. And I could see Matt went, Hmm. Like something was already, you know, uh, manifesting in his creative, creative brain mm -hmm. and cut to about a couple of years later, Casey said, can you just come sit at a table and read this new script that we're working on? I think it was actually called Untitled Casey Nicola Project. So I went to uh, his office and it was me and Brooke Sashmanskis, Chris Sieber and Angie Schwarer. And we sat around and we just read it out loud. Matt sang some tunes that he had written and I fell in love with it and with Dee Dee Allen from day one. And that was, you know, it's taken seven years and here we open November 15th during a snowstorm. This <laughs> That's right. What does it feel like to kind of, I mean, essentially the part is created for you. What is that? Yeah, that's, I mean, that doesn't happen very often. I mean, Drowsy wasn't written for me. I informed it when I was cast, but this was written, which is interesting because, you know, Dee Dee Allen is this narcissistic, selfish diva. I'm like, oh yes, it was written for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> th th thank you. But apparently she's so much fun to play and, you know, having someone write for your comedy and your voice, and I know that Matt knows my my money notes, and so everything is just crafted around your your talents, and that's such a gift, and it's such a blessing, and it doesn't happen that often, so I'm savoring every minute. Yeah, and you know, she is such this over the top diva. That's do you, <laughs> you know, within a within a huge over the top character like that, do you find similarities to yourself? Do you relate to her on certain levels? Absolutely. Apparently, I have a very strong inner Dee Dee Allen. It's so much fun to play someone who leads with such narcissism. <laughs> <laughs> There's really just nothing else. She has blinders on. It's just all about Dee Dee Allen. And it's really, you know, I'm not like that. So to get to wear her shoes and her sequins like that every night is really freeing and fun just to be so selfish. And, you know, conversely, then she has, she finds her heart in the show. So I don't have to be that person, you know, each show eight times a week. She actually has a really nice discovery in finding out who she is besides being a narcissistic, self-involved diva. Yeah, I wanted to talk about that because uh, it's kind of a tricky shift to play. How do you go about infusing humanity into a character that's been comedic for most of the show? Exactly. And she always does stay comedic because it's so crafted and written so well. However, they've written it that I have opportunities to fall in love with uh, a, an actor named Michael Potts, who, which is very easy to do, mind you. I just have to look into his eyes and listen to him. And it, he cracks Dee Dee's cold heart and kind of allows her to find a self-awareness, finally, that other people exist in the world too. And how can I be a better person? And I, you know, it, it's the writing and it's, it's all Michael Potts fault. <laughs> well, I mean, being, being a better person is fun, but uh, what's even more fun, I think, is, is watching the sort of four of you, the Broadway veterans who come in to the small town Indiana, because it's you, Brooks Ashmanskis, Chris Sieber, Andrew Schwartz, these great, you know, veteran comedians of Broadway. What is it like, you know, do you have to try to like one up each other? Is it hard to stay on the same level? No. Is it hard to stay in the same Beth level? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what it is? Even rehearsing, the bar is so high and we love each other so much. It's such a safe room 
we can throw anything up against the wall and did and just see what sticks uh, comedically and just into, you know, creating relationships. And we have such a smart creative team. They would go, don't do that, do this. Oh, that's great. Oh, let's do that. And because we know each other and we trust each other, there's so much shorthand going on that we don't even sometimes have to discuss it or we just do it and then we'll try it again and do it differently. We're still doing that on stage. We're still finding moments and beats as we do in live theater. And um, it's really fun being in the room with my pals who I love so much. And again, to go and feel so safe and trusted allows you to access things and kind of put your fear on the back burner and just jump into the pool. Yeah. And the flip side of that group dynamic um, with you four, mm -hmm. there's also these this enormous amount of young actors in the show with Caitlin Kinn and Isabel McKella. And so what is kind of the dynamic backstage uh, where, you, where you have all these younger actors making Broadway debuts? 13, 13 Broadway debuts. It's interesting, the number 13, I just have to say 13. This is my 13th Broadway show. There's 13 Broadway debuts. I won the Tony Award for Drowsy Chaperone 13 years ago. Wow. There's another 13. Casey had a 13. So I'm like, lucky 13. Um, being backstage, being in the rehearsal process with everyone, we're all, you know, we're all peers. You know, they're all my peers, no matter if they're 20 and I'm not. And we all love this show so much. And our goal is to do this show 150% every night. And we have such an affection. We're so proud of this show. We're so proud of the message and the comedy and just how wonderful we feel this show is. And there's such a respect. I'm speaking really for me. I look at them, particularly the, the ensemble. And we call ourselves the olds. I don't know if you've heard that. <laughs> the ones, the us, me and Chris and Angie and and Brooks call ourselves the literally old, the olds. Can the olds come on stage, please? We will sit, particularly in rehearsal, we would never be out of the room if they were performing, a, rehearsing a dance number because I am so in awe of their skills and their talent and what they can do so quickly that I have no access to at all. And I'm just, I'm, they fill me with wonder and awe and respect. And to this day, at the end of act one, the olds, <laughs> we're all stage, <laughs> we're all downstage left in the wings. And we all watch that number when they come down in that that uh, triangle thing. And it's just, it, it fills me with life. <laughs> I love them so much. Yeah. Um, I previously, I had talked to Caitlin as well as Chad <laughs> and Matt, and they all kind of brought up, you know, the effect this musical has had, because I think it's really spoken to, you know, the LGBT youth and Absolutely. has been so powerful. Do you have interaction with that aspect of the show? That Absolutely. Going, going at the stage door at night or the letters we get about, and it, it, it was surprising and people talk about how this show changes their lives, particularly the LGBTQ community, the young kids, A, they're seeing themselves reflected, mirrored on stage, loved, um, and that I, I, I hear a lot because a lot of people tell Caitlin and Izzy these things that after they saw this show, they they were able to come out to their parents or they're thinking about coming out now or thanking us for giving them the opportunity to feel empowered. And so that's magical. I mean, that is the power of theater and how it can affect. And also I've heard conversely, or in addition to that, if the, person I'm talking to talking about coming out and thanking us, their mother is also thanking us oh. for allowing their daughter or their son to see themselves. And she also thanks us for having one of the funniest shows she's ever seen in her life. So <laughs> it's a win-win and yeah. it's a privilege for us. And I'm just so grateful that it's such a smart, um, powerful show that's so full of heart and love. Well, I also have to talk about the ladies improving because, you know, As We Stumble Along is one of like the great comedic musical theater songs. And now you have another one. Um, it's like this great, gloriously meta showstopper from a show, a made up show within the show. What is it like performing that? Um, it's a challenge. It's, it's, it's not a hard song to sing if you're, you know, healthy. But I want to give that song uh, like 200% every night. I want to hold that note every night because 
what I love so much about the song, yes, it's crafted in such an 11 o'clock number way that we all love. But what I really love about it as an actor is this is Dee Dee Allen's moment to make Michael Potts, Tom Hawkins, that's his character's name, fall in love with her and to see that she has self-worth. She is going to sing a song that she hasn't sung in 25 years since Swallow the Moon closed. She is going to embrace that song again and show him who she really is. And so as an actor, that even adds a layer to it that is even more satisfying or as satisfying as singing this fabulous 11 o'clock number in my red jumpsuit. <laughs> it's, looks great. Really fulfill, it's really fulfilling. Um, and speaking of that other that other song I mentioned as we stumble along, huh. you won a Tony Award, your first time for a Tony Award, won on the first try. Um, so when you hear your name called at the Tonys and you win, walk us through oh, what geez. goes through your mind. Oh my gosh. I remember leaving my body and going, you, you get back in here. And I remember, you know, we're, we're told that if we are lucky enough to win a Tony Award, you have 90 seconds. So you can either spend your time going up and down the aisle going, hey, thank you. <laughs> or you can get up on stage and try to articulate some gratitude. And I just remember thinking, running, if you'll look back at that <laughs> video, it's so embarrassing. I literally am, they call my name, I'm in shock, I leave my body, I kind of say hi to Casey, and then I realize I need to be on task to get up there and try to be articulate. And Bob Martin tries to kiss me and I'm like, stop it, Danny person. It's like, I gotta, I gotta go, I gotta. So I get on stage and I just remember thinking, please don't curse, please don't fall. Please remember to thank people that, uh, you know, have meaning to you and that, that you need to thank. And so I, I did an okay job. <laughs> I just, it was terrifyingly the most thrilling moment of my life next to childbirth. <laughs> and this year, uh, for your third time uh, at the Tonys, you're you're nominated against your co-star. You're in the same category as Caitlin. Oh, I do you know. Have, do you have any like advice for her as she's navigating her first Tony season? Absolutely, and I never feel like I'm against them. You know, we're all celebrating right. each other. Um, I I we've talked about it a lot. As a matter of fact, just trying to keep in the moment, trying to be joyful, to breathe, and just to take one moment at a time and be grateful mm -hmm. and you know we're all there together we're all there together we're going to take care of each other <laughs> a really really magnificent time and there's a really great moment in the prom where you dd sort of uses her past two tony wins to barter for a better room at the motel shameless yes Shame and should you win i think is there a possibility you can use your actual tonys your two tonys to, as the props Oh, I will. Just don't tell anybody. <laughs> so going to do that. Can you imagine? <laughs> People ask me, what's the difference between Dee Dee and Beth? And I'm like, well, Dee Dee carries her Tonys with her at all times. <laughs> but Beth will that night. I'll have to do that, I think. <laughs> well, uh, Slamming Tonys. Slamming Tonys down on the hotel <laughs> desk. It'll be a really meta prop if it's appropriate. Exactly. Um, I was looking back through your show, through your uh, show history and your career, and you know, I kind of wanted to ask before I have to let you go because you've sort of done everything when you look at your resume in terms of theater. You've done original musicals, revivals, jukebox shows. Um, you just have a very, you know, it's your thirteenth Broadway outing. Um, looking back, how do you feel about your career? Is there anything that you still have to check off your bucket list that you'd like to accomplish? No. But then a, something comes along like a prom and I go, oh, I didn't realize it was on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. So I'm just available to whatever comes next. Um, I would like to do Mama Rose again. I did it this summer at the Muni and it was really fulfilling. I don't know where, I don't know when, I don't know how, but until then I'm gonna stay with prom until I can no longer do that 11 o'clock number. <laughs> I love it. You know, it doesn't get any better than the prom for me until the next moment and I go, oh, wow, maybe this was on my bucket list. I've been really lucky and fortunate and I've, I don't have any regrets. I'm just a worker bee. I'm just waiting for the next job. Well, it, this one is a, a great one for you. Obviously the Tony nominators agreed, um, <laughs> but we'll cross your, our fingers that Mama Rose comes along because I'd like to see that. Thank you. 
Uh, everyone at Gold Derby, subscribe to Gold Derby. Make sure you keep up to date with all of our Broadway updates this Tony season. And Beth, thanks so much for joining me. It's been a true you pleasure to talk to you. You are so welcome. Have a fabulous day. Thanks. You as well. Bye, Sam.